Hello everyone. Hope you're doing well. It's been a while since I've had a chance to talk to you. Uh, you know, day-to-day -day things and uh, many different projects and specifically the books. I really wanted to appreciate all the ones who have across the world uh, supported and encouraged by their purchases. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you. I hope you'll enjoy the books as much as I enjoyed writing them. Um, tonight, I want to talk to you um, about the same subject of uh, uh, um, relationships and the effects of it after the breakup, uh, specifically uh, because uh, many uh, write me an email and um, they express their difficulty in dealing with the after the breakup and they feel it's the uh, biggest disaster and they have um, problem going through their daily lives and they wonder and they crave the the ex back and so on and so forth so forth so uh, although we have talked about this subject in detail and uh, probably you are well aware of how the role of consciousness and thoughts and feelings and the files that you bring in and the uh, pictorial communication that your you know brain uh, uses to uh, process things and so on and we've talked about all these and why you feel the way you do all the order and this and that so forth but tonight I want to talk to you using some uh, medical approach but do realize as you all know I'm not a uh, uh, medical doctor my education is not in medicine however I like to read articles and if I find them interesting and relevant I would use them in my approach to deliver something that you, it could be useful to you in dealing uh, with your situation on top of whatever else that I um, use from my own understanding and experience or research in the past years and whatnot. So uh, tonight's uh, discussion, um, uh, it was an article I read by a gentleman um, who had written his name underneath that article. I believe it was uh, Ali Jennings, which I'm sure you can search and find out the original article and you know, and, and get, get more uh, uh, information from it if I fail to deliver it properly. However, I'm gonna use a part of it to, to see if it could be of some help to you. Look, um, to me, it was very interesting uh, to compare love with addictive drugs. And um, let's see, let's see why. What happens? Well, apparently, the brain, the way it's been set up, it has a reward system and alerts you from uh, um, um, of this reward by producing, secreting a chemical called dopamine. So in other words, uh, let's say um, when you are happy, something good is happening to you, or you met someone that you really like, uh, you have some social contacts or you know uh, interactions, um, dopamine is created to let your brain know, the rest of your brain, uh, to know that something good is happening or something good has happened. And of course, through uh, then uh, you go through um, uh, physical contact and looking into each other's eyes and the uh, promise of sex and climax and all that, another chemical oxytocin is created, which is uh, another beautiful feeling for you and uh, you know synchronizes the body and so forth and so forth. However, a drug in the same way hijacks the dopamine and supercharges it and makes its effect so much more that when its effect runs off, you're craving in uncontrollably for more shot of dopamine. That is what and how you get addicted to it. And then of course you go through a certain time of using that drug and you get um, used to that substance and you create certain kind of resistance and therefore eventually you understand that 
you got to deal with it and you go through the cold turkey break it off and try to deal with it and if you don't of course you will go to higher and higher drugs and eventually you go to hell I mean <laughs> we all know the end of uh, what drug using is I personally uh, have never used in mind enhancing drugs or any kind of these sort of drugs are high or whatever else that is out there I, that's my choice I personally don't believe in um, creating some uh, illusional state other than the <laughs> natural illusional state of life that we are all in it it's good enough for me exciting enough for me I'll deal with this I don't need more <laughs> illusional states <laughs> I just believe that the more sober we are and more alert and energetic we are the more possibility and chances we have to connect with the universe and the energy of the universe and bring that pure energy of the universe inside us to deal with the challenges of this journey of life and day-to-day -day challenges and progress and uh, accomplish our tasks and dreams that's my choice and of course the ones who make a different choice well <laughs> they, they they would have to take responsibility for it and then they would have to pay the price in more ways than one <laughs> yeah, that's my choice and I'm sticking to it uh, so so um, so this is how the addiction process works but look what happens with love when you meet someone and then the through the social interaction and the dopamine is created and you're, you're very happy and so on and then through uh, intimacy and more closeness and touch and all that more um, hugs and touch and oxytocin is created which helps you to to you know enjoy more and and it's very you know good for you in that way and uh, then uh, through time you guys get used to each other and this whole cloud of protective cloud of love which is all these uh, feelings of high due to these <laughs> emotional uh, uh, journey that you're going through with your partner uh, when it wears off eventually there's no more of this shield around and then you guys start actually seeing each other in the real light without really that kind of a strong tolerance for the differences and the different uh, consciousnesses and and you don't tolerate each other as much as you would when this whole feelings the secretion of these uh, dopamine and oxytocin and so on uh, w when it was there and was n not letting you actually wonder or be bothered by the differences and differences of consciousness different on the on the order of each one of you had and so on and it was easy to tolerate it but eventually through uh, the time that the honeymoon is over <laughs> and you get used to each other uh, constantly and you create this uh, you know it's nothing novel anymore and then you haven't had the chance to actually uh, grow together and you s you're expecting the physical and the chemical reactions always keep you guys together rather than on uh, mental uh, connections and uh, uh, cooperation to bring about a new uh, order in your lives and com compatibility of new consciousness between the two so then you will feel that you're breaking apart and one of you or both of you or somehow uh, you break up uh, this whole uh, process or this whole uh, journey of uh, uh, feelings that you had up to that point which was creating the dopamine and the oxytocin and so on and the drug creates these chemicals in your mind it, it, different drugs create different of these uh, chemicals some dopamine some oxytocin some serotonin some opamides uh, opio opamides I believe mm. I hope I don't mess it up but and each would be created by different drugs however the love all of these are created the dopamine serotonin oxytocin and opamides which means when the effect of it when you guys break off which is the time like the drug addict is actually uh, stopping everything to deal with it because realizes it's not going somewhere good it has a heavy fall and a drop in everything about this system uh, her system and it's a it's a withdrawal system now love has a 
a similar effect after a breakup because all of these chemicals were present not just one of them and now it's a very heavy fall at that moment and that's what makes it very difficult because it's a heavy withdrawal system so when you feel how difficult it is after breakup and you crave your ex and you want to be with your ex and you miss the ex these are not all because you, the ex was really so wonderful for you or now you think she's a or she or he is the right choice for you after the breakup it's the withdrawal system that makes you want her back it's not her and her character and her touch and affect in your life it's the actual chemicals that was created which you ended up identifying that feelings of high and creation of the dopamine and oxytocin and all that by her individual by her personality by that one person so her face her touch her ways her interaction her intimacy you identified your high with that brand with that one person that's why you now want that one person back because you're addicted to that one person which in fact you really addicted to the creation of the chemicals but you identify that feeling and those chemicals secreting your brain with that one person that individual that face that look that touch that smell that everything and that's the withdrawal system so just like you get addicted to one particular drug you see your addiction and you crave for that particular drug that gives you that high which I hope none of you know the difference because none of you are using drugs but that's how the article explains same way in the love when you break off you break up you identify that high that feeling that was good for you, that you felt good with it with that one person that's why you keep wanting that one person back not because she was so or he was so wonderful for you and the right choice but because you identify your good feelings with that brand with that one individual with that specific person and that's the addiction part it's not to her is the feeling that was created because of creation of dopamine, oxytos, oxytocin, serotonin, opamides, and all that. So you're going through a withdrawal system. Don't be surprised that this is so difficult. You feel lost. You feel you can't uh, concentrate. You can't focus. You're impatient. You want her. You, it's not that what you want. It's the withdrawal system. So brave it. Brave it and be active. Uh, do things that you always did uh, socialize with people why because oxytocin comes to help when you socialize with people with friends with family because it doesn't it's not just created by sex and intimacy it's also created by a hug to a friend a good feeling with supportive friends and family so be around them enjoy being around your friends at the time of breakup which creates that good little bit of a high feeling it helps you to ease the withdrawals and you soon will be free and realize that it's not the need for that specific person it was the feeling that you were hooked on which was because of all those uh, uh, chemical reactions and um, emotional reactions that those chemicals were creating and of course you would identify all that with that particular specific person so don't be surprised. This is the withdrawal system, withdrawal, withdrawal time, withdrawal, uh, uh, whatever that is. <laughs> I can't remember the word. <laughs> withdrawal effect. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> brave it, tolerate it, understand what it is. And I believe with education or with, with knowledge, when we understand what is happening, that we feel the way we feel, we will have a better chance to deal with it because we are not surprised to thinking, oh, this is, there's no way out of it. I feel this, oh, I'm going to feel this all my life because it's missing and it's her. I want her. But really she was or he wasn't any solution to your life because if it was, you guys would be together. It's actually the feeling that you would be getting by being with a companion, being in love and having those intimacies and those connections and so on, which would each create and secrete different kind of chemical which then bring brought dependency which then uh, after breakup brought the withdrawals uh, 
uh, symptoms. Ah, there's the word, symptoms. <laughs> I'm in trouble. So, be cool. This will too pass. This this too will pass. And basically, in a nutshell, it's like the water traveling in the riverbed, and as it's traveled, leaves some residuals on the sides, on the banks of the river. And when it the water is already gone, those residuals are still making, you know their presence known because they can be shown they can be seen and that's the effect of after the love is gone so what we need is a stronger flow of love to come and to wash this whole river bit away and take all those residuals with it and give us this new feeling of wonder and until that happens you associate and socialize with good people positive people good activities positive activities and friends and family and so on and attend to your uh, business, to your day-to-day -day lives, and before you know it, a new era is born, new feelings, new experience, and this time you will choose better and you will be careful to create this in the time of the honeymoon of love and interaction at the beginning, which you're all more tolerant with each other. You will use that time to create more connection in your consciousness and create a more uh, complementary and and uh, um, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, order, complementary order, and um, create this um, certain kind of a consciousness and the order that we bo you both together will create it, and it wouldn't be specific to one. So you would be able to have a new order and have more uh, compatibility on your consciousness level so it won't be uh, such an easy thing to um, to decide to break up at the same time if you did you would be clear to know that well it had to happen because the unconsciousness level you were not able to create a new order and compatibility wasn't created therefore better off to let the river take the residuals and everything away and find someone else that you can find more compatibility on the conscious level consciousness level i hope this was a little bit of something for you to ponder and um i hope i delivered what i wanted to deliver to you and it would make sense to you and be of some use to you i uh, hope you're doing well and i look forward to talk to you soon